Hey, here. Um, I'm here with uh, Mr. Cernad uh, at Accelerated Learning AZ, a uh, alternate high school here uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, he has uh, been willing to beta test our math fluency program for the past month with this group of students. He has seven periods of students that uh, making anywhere between 15 to 25 students per class. And uh, basically, uh, tell us about how your your um, past month with this program, observations you've had with your students, and how much you've uh, uh, utilized it. All right, well, in the, in the past month, it's definitely been a uh, transition upward in the opportunity. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting to get the random visit and then the opportunity to beta test the program and then offer it out to the students. We started uh, running with it every day right away, five days a week for about 20 minutes in the beginning of the class period, and kind of watch their math fluency speed, watch to see if they would take to it, if they enjoyed working on the basics. And what I found that on top of trying to reach the collective goal together and reach their individual goal together, it also increased their speed in the beginning of the class period. They're, they're awake, alert, ready to go as soon as I got to my other curriculum as well. So it, it trickled over into my regular day activities as well, which I did not anticipate. Oh, well, great. So, so, so um, you saw that uh, from, from the get-go, once you uh, went, went on, on day one through five, you, know, you, you saw uh, immediate gains from, from the experience uh, from your students, correct? Oh yes, absolutely. The ramp up was very quick. You know, you play game one, it, you know, when we're filling it out, this X multiplication is X variable, game five, game ten, all of a sudden day five, everybody's quick, involved in it, everybody knows how to get there right away, they're trying to get the maximum amount of points per class, they're all reaching their goal, they're reaching their individual goal and their class goal, they're working towards their class party, which was what there was incentive yeah. for that main goal, and yeah, they definitely just kept ramping up and made it up to speed quickly. So, uh, so um, what was the what was the biggest observation that you saw other than like you know that, that getting them really uh, moving and going in the in the morning? And what kind of, what other like you know uh, key moments do you recall? Um, key moments for me would be seeing somebody that was near the bottom of the leaderboard move their way up to the top um, as they dusted off their foundations and built confidence back, finding out that they are actually better at math than they originally thought. Um, it also helped flesh out some weaknesses in some of the students' abilities which was nice to address because then we can get in there and give them practice work for that and extra work. So it was giving us also an opportunity to see where kids did have some gaps in math. Mm -hmm. So that add that deeper piece of it for each individual mixed in while they're playing the game definitely was a nice great part. So you probably utilize a lot of math programs before uh, you know, major kind of school race and mature high school students. Um, what was one of the most unique things that like resonated with your students? Because one of the things that we always think with high school students is that uh, is that you know, they get bored easily or they think things are, are silly or stupid. Uh, but uh, did, did you encounter any of that type of resistance at all? Or you know, that's, yeah, I thought I was going to. Um, you did mention to me that kind of you guys see a little bit of a lull at the two week period. I was, was waiting for that. And it didn't really seem to occur very much, actually. Uh, if anything, the high school kids stayed very engaged and they enjoyed it as they were. They enjoyed it as they're getting started for the day. And uh, they didn't seem to taper off that much. I mean, even today, they're still beating their goal by 2,000, 4,000 points in some of the class period. So, mm -hmm. And they've already had their party. So that's <laughs> yeah. they've already, so that a, and, somewhat and, of a and test. And they're, uh, they're uh, yeah, last day of school is in a few days, and some of them are graduating, too. Yeah. So um, one of the things that like you probably notice uh, when, in the program that's very different is that we incorporate a, a leaderboard and a competitive aspect of it. You know? So what was your thoughts about having that in your classroom, uh, and, and how did it help uh, bring it up? You know, the, the leaderboard, I was wondering if the competitive nature of it was going to shy them away a bit because sometimes, um, you know, the students that I work with, uh, a little bit of failure pushed them away. But it, it really did the direct opposite in this particular experience. Um, they saw their position in the leaderboard as a means to move upward. They saw their individual goals as a means to get more done. They saw their collective goal as a way to get something together. And they never really let failure get in the way. Everyone just kept trying to achieve more and more. And I even saw somebody that was starting at number 19 over the course of the last month has moved their way up to number six. So really yeah. getting the job done. I think the leaderboard provided to be a healthy competitive tool. That's great. You know, because like, you know, we always uh, are very fearful of the whole ranking system. But, you know, but when done right, as you can see, uh, it's, it's uplifting for everyone. Yeah, um, so um, you know, now that you've been utilizing it for a month, uh, what are the some of the things that like, you 
found that uh, it was challenging for the students uh, um, as they were maybe going through the, the fluency of lessons. Uh, some of the challenges the students faced was in the transition between the standards, um, starting to get used to the new idea. Um, again, as we mentioned earlier in the day, uh, when you deal with the variable minus problems, those were a specific aspect of that. But uh, they seem to transition quickly with the idea, and for the most part, they can uh, adjust and get those standards back under their belt quickly. Um, so that whole idea of letting them know where their accuracy is at, keeping some of the standards material from the previous lesson and some that from the one that they're about to see, that whole lottery mechanism that has been developed into the program, uh, the students get to autocorrect a lot because of that idea. That's great. So you, know, so you, you rarely have to intervene, but when you have those moments where you have to intervene, um, how has the tool been useful for you to identify those gaps? It, it's been really useful because it flushes out some of the basics that the kids don't want to talk about at the high school level. They say that they have problems with mathematics, but they've gone so far since the last time they've actually addressed the specific problem that it's really nice to get that right in front of their face and there's, there's no way around it. If somebody keeps missing a plus five type problem or a, a minus seven type problem and that happens over and over, then we know that we're addressing something that's a direct problem and we can turn it into a strength instead of one of the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that like, is, is really flipping the whole paradigm of that. Where like, you know, where, like most math programs, kids can easily hide. Uh, and one, one thing you probably observe is that when everyone's using this program with the aspect of the leaderboard, there is no hiding. So if we push everything out in the forefront, uh, and that's intimidating for a lot of kids, but you've seen the trans transformational aspects of it, correct? Absolutely, because you get it becoming comfortable to be aware of your progress. If you didn't do great today, you can do better tomorrow. If you're doing awesome today, let's celebrate that. You know where you're at. And once it became something that's normal and a part of their daily routine, it takes the, the fear and the embarrassment factor out of not being the best, because we're just constantly working towards achieving. So as a math teacher uh, and as a, also as a, uh, as a uh, technically minded person, uh, uh, you've experienced a lot. So, uh, so I guess the question is, like, would you recommend this to any other math teacher out there? Uh, I would definitely recommend giving it a shot. Absolutely. I'm glad we took the risk. I'm glad that they gave us the opportunity to test this in beta form. And I've seen positive results with my students here at a high school level. So I've heard they've had great results at the elementary school level. So I would definitely give it a shot if they come and uh, knock it on your door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And actually, yeah, you were one of the first uh, high school uh, applications of this. Uh, and actually, for me, actually, that's just a little a side note. It's like, you know, like I said, like, you know, people, uh, kids in high school would think it's, like, not cool or not fun, but we didn't even see that. Moment, right? No, no, they didn't shy away from it. They didn't think it was beneath them because it had um, an elementary feel to it. It wasn't that it was elementary. Is that it was simplistic and gets to the point, but it still gives them something tangible to look at afterwards to see their progress. So they really stuck to it. Yeah, and actually, they actually like our uh, mascot too. Chromie, yeah. right? Chromie is a hit around here. If we had t-shirts, you guys would be making it. <laughs> t-shirts with <laughs> Chromie. Yeah, that, that, that would be real funny. Yeah. That was fun. But definitely the high schoolers stick with it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, John, do you have any questions at all for him at all? Uh, I know uh, we've covered a lot of bases, but do you have anything that comes to mind? Just amazing observing your students. Just amazing. And I today was a transformational day for me. I was like changed my whole mental paradigm about the nature of the program and what it can do. I, I, I just can't wait to see you take a freshman group of students <laughs> and march them forward. It's it's gonna be awesome. I I saw students here today and I'm thinking the only thing that separates them from, from Albert Einstein. I saw a lot of students, they're, they're not adding anything at all. They're going to be able to climb that ladder you know, nine tiers in four weeks. It's going to be stunning. It's going to be something to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And we're here to rescue all students, so like, you know, we're really glad that, that your uh, high school students uh, have been really have taken it really to it. Actually, uh, just tell us a little bit about your demographic here. Like, you know, uh, we're not dealing with a group of affluent, uh, uh, high SES. Uh, What's, what's the environment? You know, we're in an at-risk environment. Uh, the school's been here over 20 years, uh, helping kids find a place to succeed. Um, we've got, you know, all different walks of life, all different ability levels, um, but the, the major consistency is that in the classroom they can all use a little bit more individualized program, and this tool is another individualized program, but also works on a collective level and they take right to it. It's great for them. It helps them to build back against some of those foundations that they're scared to mention in the first place because it's just been so long since the last time they've actually addressed it. So it really works hand in hand 
because it is a very niche population, but it's a large niche population that's out there all over that could definitely benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. Yo. How many kids are still counting their fingers? What's the stat, John? So it's over 10 million. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, so we're here to, to uh, hopefully correct that. Right. Well, thank you very much thank uh, you, for the time. Appreciate and, uh, the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely.